Hello. Welcome to another installment of the Cab Talks Tourism. We're very excited to have the Emory Golf Coach, John Schoberg, with us today. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. This is, this is cool. Um, I have been here in Atlanta about 14 years. Uh, 14 years at Emory as the men's golf coach. Uh, spent the first three as an assistant and then took over as the head coach 11 years ago. Uh, been an unbelievable experience, a uh, great place to be, um, great university in town, and, and we've, we've loved it. We've, I, I came with my, my girlfriend, and she's now my wife, and we've got two kids. So we've we're created some good roots here and, and really enjoyed being, our time in Atlanta. Well, great. You've been here about two years longer than I have, so I've been here around 12. So quite interesting. So how did you get passionate for golf, and how did you get interested in coaching golf? Yeah, I grew up in, in a small town in northern Minnesota and, and just did what the season uh, required. So I, I played basketball in the winter, uh, played golf all summer, uh, in the spring and summer, uh, hunted and fished a little bit in the fall and, and just did it again the next year. So I uh, played a ton of golf for not a lot of, lot of time in the summer, and I think that really helped. Uh, you know, I certainly didn't burn out. I was I was super excited every March, April when, when we got to start playing again, and um, you know, it just kind of became a passion of mine. I spent, you know, most of my high school days, summer days on the golf course from, from daylight to dark, and we had some long days in northern Minnesota, so it was good. Well, I lived three years in North Dakota, so I'm yeah. sitting there trying to figure out how you could get three months or four months yeah, of golf because that, that's about what it was. It seemed like we didn't have summer until June, July, and then we're August and back in winter again. Back in winter again. So, but uh, you miss one major sport for northern Minnesota is hockey. I did play hockey. Uh, I had to make a decision in about seventh grade to play hockey or basketball. Uh, I guess I thought I was a little bit better basketball player. I wasn't. I wasn't great at either. But uh, yeah, so I, I did play hockey till I was about uh, thirteen years old, I guess, in seventh grade, and then and then uh, had to decide couldn't do both anymore. So um, still love it, still follow it, um, but but was a basketball player through high school. So you played about three, four months of golf during the summer. Yeah. And then what made you think, I want to be a golf coach? Well, I played. I was fortunate enough to play in college. I went to Methodist University in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a small Division three school. And I um, had, a, had an opportunity to play on the team there, you know, kind of stumbled upon. We didn't really know what we were doing, uh, but stumbled upon a great coach who's, who's still there, been there now 30 years, but um, probably the preeminent college golf coach in the country, won a bunch of national championships at the Division three level. And um got really fortunate to be there and play for him and then uh kind of had the opportunity to either become a, a pga golf professional um i'm still a member of the pga which which i love but um uh, also stumbled into the opportunity to go to duke and, and work there with wow. their college teams a little bit as a golf pro and then ultimately uh right place right time got a call about the job at, at emory and here we are well, Fayetteville is a great place. I lived there for many years. I forgot about that university. Yeah. I always think of Fayetteville State. Yep. But yeah, while I was there, too. I had golf packages. Yep. And we were wearing out our van transporting people to all these different golf courses. We had to build in rental cars. So you definitely went a great spot to go to college with all the golf courses yeah, around the 30, area. 30, 40 minutes over to Pinehurst and yep. everything that offers. Uh, good golf in Fayetteville proper itself. Um, so yeah, and then you know, like I said, being able to play in November and and December and January and February uh, was fantastic. So that was that was a big deal for me staying down here in the south. Well, we're glad you're down here. Yeah. So uh, you okay? You're so you're coaching golf, you are playing golf. Um, what do you look for to recruit your players for golf? Yeah. So for us, it's you know, Emory, the academic piece is is kind of the blessing and the curse a little bit, right? It's a uh, it's a world class academic institution and and we get um interest from players uh young men all over all over the u.s and all over the world so the first piece we're looking at is do you fit uh, the academic profile of an emory student and then we're certainly looking for the best players we can find that's that's typically a kid that can average pretty close to to par over the course of a summer um so those are really the two two things we're we're looking at right out of the gate is do you do you fit the profile academically and then can you help us from a golf standpoint so how many golfers are on your team we have 12 at the moment and that's pretty standard we're looking for about two to three kids in each class uh so that kind of keeps us in that 10 to 12 range so is there a maximum number you can have on a team 
No, we are, we are not limited uh, in any way, minimum or maximum wise. It's just a matter of we don't have a golf course uh, on campus, right? So we're we're using somebody else's facility. So there is some limitations into how many tee times you can ask for and how much space you can take up on, at somebody else's place. So it's a little bit easier to manage if, if you've got three tee times or less worth of players. So like when you're going out, uh, uh, well, let's shift gears. Uh, I was going to ask you about how many can actually play, yeah. but why don't we talk about your upcoming golf tournament? Then it can lead into how many sure. you could actually play. Yeah, yeah, we've got so we've got two regular season events. One we're going to Alabama this weekend to play uh, a new event at, in Muscle Shoals. I've never been to that part of the world, so excited to get up there. And then uh, kind of our regular season finale. It's it's been that way for uh, several years now. Kind of we've hosted the last event uh, with Discover to Cab at. And we're out at Cherokee Run um, uh, two weeks from or a week from Sunday, so about 10, 12 days from now. That tournament will start, and then uh, we play Sunday, Monday, Tuesday out there, and that's that's our last regular season tournament. And we've got a couple weeks and get through finals, and then uh, middle of May we go to the NCAA tournament up in Kentucky. Ah, but we're at Lexington, Lexington, Louisville, Kentucky, Lexington, yeah, Lexington, exactly. Yep, okay. just outside Lexington. Yeah, because we've been excited. We've hosted you for many years now. You played, I believe, in a different than couple, Cherokee. But. Yep, a couple different places. We've been at uh, we had Stone Mountain for a minute. We've used Smoke Rise a couple times, and then this will be our second year at Cherokee Run. Uh, they've been awesome. Uh, really, really good layout, good golf course, um, and, and they treat us great. And then you guys have that whole Stonecrest Mall area, which right. which we set up the teams at, which uh, which is fantastic with the restaurants and everything there. So. Uh, it's worked out really well the last two years. Hopefully, we can keep doing it. So, now, are you involved at all in that little bitty tournament going on right now nationally? No, no. I have uh, – I've been to it. I've been fortunate to, to be over there a few times. Well, I you know, won't make it this year with our travel schedule, but um, it is uh, – it's an unbelievable place. I mean, certainly. It's everything and you hear about and then some. It's it's probably the one place where you, you can't have high enough – expectations when you go through the gate because it's it's going to meet everything um that they that it, it's everything you thought it could be and more it's, now how does it i have been to east lake i uh, i used to have a, a tent we we would sponsor but how does it compare east lake to the masters i mean it's the most well run event probably in the world just from the parking to the ticketing to the concession stands to the merchandise tent to where they get you onto the golf course it's just if you put one person in charge and gave them an unlimited budget and just said we're going to do it the best way you can do it and that's everything they do all the time so it's unreal well the cab is blessed because a lot of our hotels fill up because of the sure, masters I'm busy week, I'm sure. and then pdk with yep. the private airport it has a bunch of jet traffic coming in for the masters so and then uh so we're blessed to have a decent amount of golf here. Yes. We're very excited to have year with the tournament here. Uh, we'll keep going. Um, how do you work with the individual players to make them better, make them great? Yeah, most of them come in with a, with a coach from home, right? So oh. uh, from a full swing standpoint, that's something that, that they have and, and we'll communicate with them um, and, and just try to keep them working on the, on the path that they've been going with the coach at home. And then we do a ton, you know, to get into the nitty gritty of it, we do a ton of short game stuff, a ton of wedge play stuff, uh, putting. That's usually really where where the kids can come in and, and improve the fastest. That's kind of the low hanging fruit, if you will. Um, you know, the closer they get to the green, um, that's the easiest gains to make um, with with the type of players that we have. So we, we focus a ton on that um, day in and day out at practice. and. And uh, like I said, continue to work with their coaches at home to make sure we're not getting any bad habits while they're here. But um, a lot of short game, a lot of wedge play, uh, a lot of stuff around the greens for sure. Speaking of bad habits, that's why I never could play golf. Because <laughs> every time I tried to play, I would like like I'm batting and I would lift up. Yeah. And just completely, if I ever actually connected with the ball, it went. But sure. It was, un, uh, it was unusual for me to hit the thing. Uh, luckily, my youngest son plays for the Howard golf team, and he didn't inherit my bad habit. Right. So, so excited yeah. about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So uh, tell us about a challenging situation 
and it could be from here, other places, and how did you overcome it? Well, I mean, you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds on a daily basis. There's there's plenty of challenging situations. It's more about, uh, you know, navigating through them, and and a lot of it, well, not a lot of it, but you know, certainly some of it now deals with social media and and stuff they're posting. So you just try to educate them, right? Like you try to educate them as much as you can that that uh, just because they put it on a on a story, right, that's supposed mm-hmm. to disappear in the next 12 hours or 24 hours, it doesn't mean it's not gone forever. So, uh, you know, we try to do a good job with, with the education piece and, and help them um, along on, on that side of it to really uh, hopefully prevent some of the, the challenging things that have come up in the past. But um, like I said, 18 to 22-year-olds, there's plenty – there's plenty to cover uh, in that in that category for sure. So it's it's pretty cool because or I shouldn't say cool, but it was interesting how your challenge is something that has nothing to do with golf. It's just helping the kids, the students out. Yeah, for sure. There's there's uh, I mean there's plenty of golf challenges too, but that's just part of the gig at right. this point. Um, you know, it's the stuff off the course that that can really interfere with what we're trying to accomplish for sure. So let's go to another question. What is the remote, re- most rewarding aspect of coaching golf? Well, it's it's you know very similar working working with eighteen to twenty two year olds every year. You know, I'm getting getting older. We've been here, like I said, fourteen years now, and and we have have two little ones, but they're they're eighteen to twenty two every year, right? So it's it's fantastic to come back to that energy every fall and and have them on campus and and just you know. University college campuses are just a buzz with, with that youthful exuberance and um, you know just love going to practice every day, uh, love love competing with these guys. It's that's that's the most rewarding part is just seeing them go from eighteen to twenty two and the maturity that happens in those four years and hopefully they get a little bit better at golf and hopefully we can win a couple of tournaments while they're here. But um, really that piece of of them growing up is is fantastic to to be a part of. So what's some of the schools you compete against for these tournaments? Yeah, so the the schools in the southeast would be like Oglethorpe on the other side of town. We don't mm-hmm. like them very much. <laughs> uh, um, uh, a few in North Carolina, Methodist University where I went to school, Guilford College, Greensboro College. Uh, here in Georgia, you've got Piedmont University uh, north in the mountains. You've got LaGrange College down there uh, just south of town a little ways. Huntington College is in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, and then... Sewanee, University of the South, Rhodes College, uh, Birmingham Southern, um, and then, you know, in our league, our league is very unique, the UAA, uh, only four schools of the eight play golf, but that's Carnegie Mellon University, which is in Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. University of Rochester, New York, and then NYU in the city, and then us play men's golf, Washington University, St. Louis plays women's golf. And then the other rest of the league is University of Chicago, Case Western Reserve in Cleveland, and Brandeis University. They don't play golf of any kind. But geographically, our league makes no sense. Um, but it's great, high academic, high research-based universities that that are also, you know, very very athletically inclined as well, and, and pretty good, very competitive league from that standpoint. Yeah, I think NYU has a huge. Uh hospitality school huge hospitality school huge school in general it's one of the biggest division three schools in the country i think they've got third maybe thirty thousand students in general so they're a little bit bigger than than most but uh yeah interesting i mean just an interest from a golf knowing it from a golf standpoint it's just an interesting place to to compete against from a golf standpoint being in lower manhattan and just uh it's tough to play golf in that part of the world yeah very much so so Listen to you talk about Oglethorpe. Is that your like your arch rival? Yeah, locally certainly. Uh, and then the teams, you know, the teams in our league, you know, Carnegie Mellon, University of Rochester, and NYU. There's an inherent inherent rivalry in all our sports: basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, volleyball. So we don't we don't like them very much either. But uh, uh, Oglethorpe's been very good at golf for the, for my entire tenure here. So anytime you can beat them is is That's good. Good for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's some of the teams in the tournament you're hosting here in a couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah, great question. So, we've got uh, Oglethorpe's playing. Um, who else is coming? Center College out of Kentucky is coming over. Uh, um, Babson College is in Massachusetts. They're coming down. Uh, University of Texas at Dallas. So, and Dallas is coming over. Um, 
The uh, Pomona Pitzer is in California. They're coming in. I'm going to get the whole list up here so I don't forget anybody. But um, So we've got some great outside of the region teams coming in. I think we have seven top 25 teams coming in. Wow. Ava Rett uh, is in Virginia. They're coming. Randolph Macon is also in Virginia. They're coming down. Washington and Lee University also in Virginia coming down. Um, hold on. We're loading here <laughs> very slowly. Um, Randolph Macon, Averett, uh, Lynchburg is coming down out of Virginia. Lynchburg, or where is that, that relig the religious school? Um, no, that's uh, Liberty. 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 Yeah. They're, they're not. Uh, Wabash out of Indiana is coming. Oh, and Bethel College out of Minnesota is coming down. So hopefully they'll have played outside before they get here because it's been a tough winter in that part of the world. So it's, uh, I believe it's 13 teams. So in this. the north, don't you all play like, it's almost like golf ball, golf? I mean, go I mean uh, tennis ball, golf, or something like that in the winter? Well, they play indoors in the north, yeah. There's a lot of simulators. There's a lot of uh, – the simulators have improved so much the last five, five years, ten, ten years especially, even the last five years, where you can get some really good indoor golf in. And then if you're lucky enough, you can get in a heated bag and hit the ball into – uh, just outside, but you're you're in a heated bay, so you can hit off mats and actually see the ball fly. That's the best case scenario. But a lot of places have indoor simulators now, which are very good. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Okay, um, what type of advice would you give to either a young kid looking at golf or a person who is like high school ready to go to college? I mean, I'm sure I would assume it's probably different advice. Yeah, but. Abs absolutely. So yeah, if you want to play competitive college golf, uh, there's definitely a place where you can do it, right? There's, there's al almost 300 division three schools in the country. There's about that many division one schools in the country, not quite as many division twos, but it's like 225. So you know, there's upwards of 850 golf programs, men's golf programs uh, in the NCAA. And that doesn't include the junior college, doesn't include NAIA. So I think it's over 1,000 golf programs wow. overall. So if you want to play college golf, you know, whether you're breaking par every day, you know, or you're shooting in the 80s every day with a chance to get better, uh, there's a place for you if you're willing to search it out and, you know, and do a little bit of homework and, and find it. Um, you know, generally speaking, what I would say is play. Play as many competitive rounds as you can. Play on your high school team. Play multi-day events uh, in the summer. There's uh, dozens of places to do that. Uh, the Junior Golf Scoreboard is a website. JuniorGolfScoreboard.com is a great resource that hosts uh, or has every multi-day event in every state on a s calendar. Right. And so you can go onto that website, search Georgia, and just find every tournament available to you in the months of, you know, as we go forward, April, May, June, July, August. So I would play as many uh, events as you can. Uh, don't just be a range rat. Like, get on the golf course and play. Post scores. Uh, there's nothing that, that replicates competitive golf. There's a way different s between your handicap or playing at your club in a club championship than there is playing in a – you know, in a junior golf tournament where, you, where you've got to post a score at the end of the day and it, everybody gets to see it. So do that as much as you can. Um, if you're looking, you know, getting later into the process, sophomore, junior, senior year, you know, something I would, I would start with is, you know, just looking at a map, right, and trying to figure out, like, how far am I willing to travel from home, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's where I would start. Like, it, do I want to be able to drive to school, come home on the weekends, right, within two or three or four hours, all right, well, that's how big this circle is. Or do I just want to be in the southeast? Okay, there's these four states or five states or six states that I'm willing to go to. Or is it the entire country? Does it not particularly matter to me? Or do I want to be able to fly there directly? We do have a great airport. That helps. But do I want to be able to, to you know, easily get in and out of, out of town? And then I would go see as many different schools as you can because there's nothing that replicates being on the, on the property, right? Right. And, Emory is different from Oglethorpe. We're both in Atlanta, but we're different, and and, and we're st we're definitely different than uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or in Athens, Georgia. You know, uh, just the way the town is, the feel is, the vibe you get on campus. So the the more places you can see, 
the more information you can gather, hopefully the better decision you can make. But there's nothing that replicates being on the, on the property because you'll find out, I think, pretty quick. If you want to be in a big school or a, or a smaller school or a medium school or in, in the city or not in the city in a rural area right. or – uh, you know, a lot of those factors that go into trying to decide where, where you're going to school. So Now, is um, golf like football, basketball, and all that? Do you have scholarships to play golf? At our level, we do not. So at the Division One level, a fully funded program would have four and a half scholarships. Mm. And not like football and basketball, they can divvy those up, like, partially. So most programs would have probably between seven and ten, seven to twelve guys. And then most of those guys will be on some portion of a scholarship. So getting a full ride scholarship in golf is very unusual. Like you're very, very good. So you're really, if you're on a golf team, more than likely it's because you really like the play. You love to play. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you may be getting, you know, anywhere from fift- ten to fifty percent. If you get a fifty percent scholarship in golf, that's a big deal, uh-huh. right? You're getting half half your half your uh, school paid for, and then uh, division three or uh, division two. Has scholarships. They get three and a half scholarships, or maybe three point four scholarships to fully, or to divvy up amongst their guys. And then at our level, Division three, we get no athletic based aid. Mm. So most schools will have some version of an academic scholarship or merit based aid that you can apply for. Um, and so just because you don't think you can afford it, that would be the other thing I would say. Don't look at like just the sticker price. Uh, of of a university because that's you know pr- probably not what everybody's actually paying right there's some there'll be some aid in there s- in some way or shape or form that you can qualify whether it's merit or, or need based um, so if you find a place you like you know go through the steps to figure out how much it's actually going to cost before you rule it out just because you think it costs too much because it may not not be nearly as much as you think so I've kind of learned that uh, my youngest son is senior getting ready to go to college yeah. in what August yeah. And yeah, it's here's the price, but here's what your really price right. is, and here's here's the, in Georgia, it's pretty much hope or not yeah, hope, sure. but if you're not yep. looking at Georgia, you're looking private or something. There yep. is all kinds of different yep. pricings. Yep, different merit based aids, different need based aids, uh, different scholarships you can apply for um, during your time there. So there's a lot of ways to make it uh, in into your budget if if you're willing to do some homework on it yeah for sure well the final two things and one of them may or may not be is there anything else you want to bring up about the tournament or about your program and then i'd like to kind of close with a with your favorite golf story it could be oh, great on any type of concept uh well let's close uh with with the tournament coming up uh 17th and 18th uh cherokee run monday tuesday monday we're out there all day we're playing 36 holes free admission you want to watch golf uh come on out hopefully we get some nice weather if we can if we can pull that off uh so we're playing 36 holes monday starting at 8 30 so we'll be out there for 10 hours um come out have lunch watch some golf go back to work bring your kid out after school we'll still be playing until probably 6 6 30 into the evening so uh come see a college golf tournament tuesday morning uh just 18 holes starting at eight o'clock uh we'll be wrapping up hopefully by one or 1 30 and getting all those teams on the road uh headed home and and back on campus tuesday night so uh, a couple mondays and tuesdays from now um come on out if you're in the area we'd love to have you uh my favorite golf story uh great great question uh trying to think probably the last time just from from a play-in we're fortunate we, we try to take our team to, to scotland every three years we're scheduled to go again this august <coughs> we're uh we're a year behind because of covid but uh we'll go back this august but the last time we went which would have been i believe the summer of 18 uh we got to play the old course at st andrews uh with the two groups so that was uh just from a golf standpoint just playing me playing personally and and with our team and just and, and just such an enjoy with a beautiful day sunny uh relatively light winds by scottish standards um and relatively warm uh by their standards so it was a, a picturesque day uh so anytime you can you can play golf in scotland on a perfect day with good company is is a great 
great, great day. That's an awesome story. Yeah. Now, it's since we're sponsoring day. you all for this one, mm-hmm. don't, don't you think that we should go with you to Scotland? Come and, on, we'd love to have you. And I'll try out the scotch in yes, these places. Yes, yes, they have that. That's that's good as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that wraps up all my questions. And, John, I really appreciate you coming on the show. And we hope to have you back maybe like next year's uh, tournament. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it again next April. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you for tuning in to our podcast with DeKalb Talks Tourism.